last week I left you with this that when I come back next week, me and all my friends will be here to greet you. And today it's me and all my friends. Let me introduce you to all my friends. We've got the Moto G6, the Moto G6 Play, the Honor 7A, the Honor 7C, and a very interesting phone from TCL that's playing in a whole new category, a phablet with a full HD screen in the economy segment. So those are my friends. This is the show. Moto G6 and the G6 Play arrive in India and we got our hands on it. Watch our review to find out if they are worth your money. Honor's budget phones have a lot in store for the consumers, but are they the best in the under 10k segment? Find out on the show. Neha Dupia launched the Honor phones and we got to have a very candid chat with her. I don't think that anyone can click better selfies than um, Karan, especially with that pouch of his. The most good-looking variant of the OnePlus 6 in our Market Watch segment. Our top story today, and we have multiple top stories, our first top story today is with Motorola, the G6 and the Motorola G6 Play. Let me tell you a little bit of history behind. 2013, Motorola introduces the G series. Remember, they have more like the E that are very successful in India. Now, the promise on the legacy that they created was that we will bring you very innovative, very good looking phones, but the product will actually be priced very well. And that's what they're trying to do again with the G6. Now, I'm going to take you this phone and I have to say the first one is right on the money this is an absolutely gorgeous looking phone a full 3d curve the typical Motorola circle camera the ring camera uh, two dual uh, dual camera at the back a very nice selfie camera in the front with a selfie flash great screen so it's a very very nice phone but once again I must say that Motorola is now trying to do something dramatically different they're trying to say that don't fall for the spec war because the spec war is only about numbers. Eventually, the numbers don't matter. It's the experience, the everyday usage of the phone that matters. In my hand now is, of course, the G6 Play. Comes with a transparent cover, so let me take that off. And once again, you will notice, again, it's a very nice looking phone. But this time, the phone has a single camera at the back again. The fingerprint scanner is on the back on the G6. It's on the front. And I'll tell you something more about that too. This time it's a 720p, so even though it's an 18 by 9, the display is only HD, not full HD. So both phones are all about experience. In fact, let me tell you a very interesting experience. Think of this fingerprint scanner button on the G6 as a laptop trackpad. Remember, you can swipe left, swipe right. Even on this, swiping left, swiping right from the top, from the bottom, gives you different controls over your phone. And remember the famous chop chop, right? So all those things, and for those who don't know what a Motorola chop chop is, you actually have gestures by which you can control your phone. So if you do two, this, the phone actually starts the flashlight. You do a twist and the camera comes in. So Motorola says the future is the user experience. Let's take a look at our review to find out if they're right on the money. Motorola is keeping the momentum going in the budget segment and is back with its latest in the G6 series, the Moto G6 and G6 Play. And while both phones score high in the looks department, are these phones more than a blast from Motorola's past? Well, the G6 is the more premium of the two. The front of the phone comes with a fingerprint scanner, which is pretty fast, along with the face unlock feature. The face unlock worked well and had no lags when we tried it. The phone is swift and is powered by a 3000 mAh battery. The phone runs on Android 8.0 and it feels comfortable to use. The screen of the G6 is 5.7 inches and it has almost no bezels. The colors are amazing and the display is in fact full HD with edge-to-edge -edge viewing space. This is another place where the G6 scores high. But one of the best parts in the G6 is the inclusion of a dual camera setup with a 12 megapixel 5 megapixel lens and while the pixels themselves are not too high the pictures on the phone really impressed us it also has a good slow motion camera and the Moto G6 packs in some fun features as well like the spot color option well the image speaks for itself the front camera is a whopping 16 megapixels and gives a good result especially in bright daylight face filters add a splash of fun to the selfies as well the gestures on this phone will make it very familiar for Motorola users Chop Chop, Twist to Launch Camera and the others are convenient and gesture control after using this phone seems to be the need of the hour. The 3GB RAM variant of the Motorola G6 is priced at 13,999 rupees. 
Now, while the G6 does take the cake, the Moto G6 Play is not even one step behind. With a starting price of 11,999 rupees for the 3GB RAM variant, its specifications are almost equally impressive. In fact, the G6 Play comes with a bigger 4000 mAh battery and a comfortable single rear camera. The camera is good at 13 megapixels while the front camera is 8 megapixels just like the G6. The difference really comes in with the display resolution. The G6 Play does have a lower display resolution but the screen size is the same at 5.7 inches. The fingerprint scanner works fast and this one's located on the back of the phone. The Cellguru verdict? Motorola is back with a budget bang. With the G6 and G6 Play, we don't miss any features and as always, the gesture controls steal the show. But with stiff competition in this segment, how does the company manage to stay a cut apart? We need to have a, a premium phone, let's say not so premium price. Along with that, we have added uh, uh, some elements which are, yes, it is about giving an extra battery to the customer. Yes, uh, it is about giving a very good camera to the customer. But it is also about giving a good buying experience to the customers, which we are doing right now by spreading mini moto hubs across the country. Let's move on now to our second stop story, and it features two phones again. This is the story of the Honor 7A and 7C, and before we open up these two, let me tell you a little bit about Honor's 7 series. So the Honor 7X, one of the most successful phones for Honor, one of the most successful phones in this country ever. They've sold them in millions. So now when they bring in the 7A and 7C, expectations were very high and Honor did something very interesting. Their strategy has really been on point. They brought them at a much lower price. They played into the economy segment and they really pumped it up with great specs. So here's our review of both the phones, the 7A and the 7C. Honor might just deserve a badge of honor for being on a roll in India. Well, the Honor 10 came and conquered. And now the company is not leaving any stone unturned in the budget segment either. Meet Honor's latest 7A and 7C, both that claim to be powerful dual camera phones that deliver a lot for a less price. The Honor 7A at a price of 8,999 rupees and 7C at a starting price of 9,999 rupees for the 3GB RAM variant. But are they bang for your buck? Let's find out. Well, the Honor 7A seems to have a Built quality, using the phone feels comfortable and the screen size is not too big to navigate with even one hand use. It has a 5.7 inch screen with full view display. The phone does not attract smudges since it has a slightly matte finish to it. Under the hood, the 7A comes with 3000 mAh battery which lasted us one full day of use. It runs on the Snapdragon 430 Octa-Core processor which is nothing new but it works for the 7A. It comes in only one variant in terms of storage with 32GB along with 3GB RAM. Using the 7A is pretty smooth and runs on Android Oreo 8.1 along with EMUI 8.0. In fact, the EMUI 8 packs in a variety of smart features like three-finger screenshot, a one-click split and a navigation dock. The 7A is under 10,000 rupees but it does pack in a decent dual camera setup with 13 and 2 megapixel lens. It does give a good depth effect and we found the camera to be sufficient with not too much to write home about. The front camera is a 2 megapixel lens which comes with a soft flash. The selfies were good even in low light without much noise. The 7A also packs in a fingerprint scanner at the back of the phone. We tried this and it worked pretty fast. And not just the fingerprint scanner, the 7A also has a face unlock feature. It worked well without any hiccups but isn't as fast as some of the other phones in the market. Now moving on to the Honor 7C. On first glance, you can't tell the difference from the 7A. But the 7C does have a larger screen at 5.99 inches with a full view display. Watching videos on the screen is good experience. Since it has a big screen, Honor has given this phone an uninterrupted gaming mode and claims that the phone is also meant for avid gamers. The 7C also has a fingerprint scanner and face unlock feature and comes with up to 4GB RAM and 64GB storage. 4GB RAM variant of the 7C is priced at 11,999 rupees. The Cell Guru verdict. As an entry level phone, the 7A has a lot to offer. With great battery and features like face unlock, it makes a good day phone. The best part about this phone though is its price. Priced under 10,000 rupees, the 7A stands out as one of the new budget phones to watch out for. And while the price difference between the 7A and the base variant of the 7C is only a thousand rupees, the only thing new that the 7C has to offer is a slightly larger screen. We wish the battery was 
more on this phone, but using the 4GB RAM variant, we felt it is powerful and the EMUI 8 fits hand in glove with the 7C. If you're looking at a powerful day-to-day -day phone in the 12,000 rupee range, then the Honor 7C might be for you. And the person launching the phones off was, of course, Neha Dhupia. Neha, welcome to the show. But Neha, I have only one thing to say to you. How could you? Hi, Raji. How could I what? Neha, obviously, how could you break my heart and get married to another man? <laughs> well, uh, Rajiv, you broke my heart 20 years ago. So I think uh, rightly so that I do it 20 years later. <laughs> you know, Neha, I wish I had known the intensity of your feelings at that time. But, you know, now it's just too late. So, you know, if you have to choose between the two, um, Rajiv or Angad, oh, that you've already have. I meant the Honor 7A or the 7C, the two phones that you've launched. Which one would it be? I mean, uh, both the phones are fantastic. We talk about similar qualities, whether, you know, they, they have the dual camera. Uh, one of them has, a, they also have the face recognition. Um, they have this amazing sort of bezel-less screen, which is so, you know, everything is, the, the display is so big and so clear. Um, what I love is the fact that it has this bifurcation mode. So if you're watching, something you don't have to actually get out of one app to get into like a whatsapp or something else to reply to your messages so it all happens and i think we as women by we i mean me and and all the other women there um out there we love multitasking so it's great for us but i would have to go with the um, you know the honor 7 and 7c but if i have to pick a favorite um i'd go with the 7c for sure yeah that was very nicely done a little long but then it is you and I would say that you could actually join me as a co-anchor uh, on the show for sure. But for sure. let's now move on to more interesting things. I know you always like these interesting word games. So here's one for you. I'm going to give you three features, okay? Uh, just blurt them out. And you tell me the, these attributes would be perfect for whom? First name that comes to your mind. Ready? Okay. Feature and attribute number one, front camera. Uh, the selfie front camera would definitely go to my friend um, Karan Johar because I don't think that anybody can click better selfies than um, Karan, especially with that pout of his. <laughs> okay, I would totally agree. The pout, oh, absolutely. Okay, the second one's a little bit more interesting. The large display that these phones come with. The large display that the phone comes with, I'll have to give it to uh, uh, my brand new husband. <laughs> and the only one I have because I don't know I've seen him many times and I walk in on him and he's like he just keeps doing something like I don't know what he does but he doesn't there are like so many mirrors in the house but he always insists on picking up the phone and he'd be like I don't know why he does that but if I gave him this phone which I will that's all he's going to do with it like sometimes there's a call that's coming and he'll cut the call and keep checking the, the beard and how chiseled his jaw is. I don't know what he does, but it has to go to Angad for sure. <laughs> okay, uh, Neha, you know, somehow I remember things a little differently. Are you sure that's not you? I remember you couldn't keep away any reflective surface anywhere around. You would check yourself out. But that's not me, actually. I'm not a mirror for a person. I'm not, like, even when I'm at work and you can, uh, my makeup artist or my team that gets me ready would vouch for this. Once I see myself, I don't go, like, checking myself out in the mirror, I don't see myself like in a selfie camera. I'm a little particular about some things, but then once I check out, I check out. Okay, Neha, you may have changed, but nobody changes that much. Okay, third attribute, big fat battery. Uh, the amazing battery, I think would go to my mom because she's a stalker. My mother can... <laughs> My mother looks at Instagram. She's on every social media site. So she goes on to Twitter and then she reads. She reads a lot she, uh, on, on the phone and I keep telling her, you've got to stop doing that. But it's like, wake up in the morning and my mom's reading the phone and my dad's reading the papers. And one thing she does a lot, and I know she's going to, she's going to hate me for saying this. She's, I don't know, on level some 1000 something or some crazy level on Candy Crush. So yeah. I, the battery life bit has to go to my mom. <laughs> okay, Neha, I think that wraps it up. Once again, you and me must part. Thank you, Rajiv. It's been so wonderful talking to you. And I'm sorry that I broke your heart, but I'm glad you feel that way. Till then, remember, honor. <laughs> Absolutely, Neha. We will remember honor and I'll see you soon. Let's move on now from Neha Dhupe, of course, to a phone that I thought was very interesting. This is the phone from TCL, and it actually comes in with a brand new category it's creating on its own. Now, this is a 
but therefore a big screen phone. It plays in the economy category yet it has a full HD screen on the phablet and some interesting battery life on it. So let's take a look at this brand new phone from TCL. Alcatel's A3 series is known for being easy on the pocket and now TCL has come out with the new A3V. But before we go into the review, with so much competition in the sub 10,000 rupee category, what makes the A3V stand apart? There is a tremendous amount of uh, success for us in a tablet category. And what has happened is even the chipset here is a MT8735, which is a, a specially designed chipset for our large screen devices, which gives it, uh, it's in our 10 inch tablet also. So we use the same chipset as in a 10 inch category also. Well, the TCL A3V is priced at 9,999 rupees for the 3GB RAM variant, but does it make the cut for a great entry level phone? Let's take a quick look. TCL is known for its phablet phones with 6 to 8 inch screens. In keeping with this, the A3V also sports a large 6 inch screen with 2K display. In fact, it is a full view display with a 18 by 9 ratio and the colors seem crisp. The phone or phablet, as TCL likes to term it, is slightly large to hold and operate. The design is sleek and the dual cameras are located on the rear in the center. Yes, this sub 10,000 rupee phone does have a dual camera setup. It has a 16 megapixel and 5 megapixel lens and the pictures we took did not give us too much of a bokeh effect but the quality of the pictures was pretty good even in low light. The front shooter is 8 megapixel like most Android phones now, comes with a beauty mode as well as several filters. The internal storage is sufficient at 32 GB and the phone runs on Android Oreo 8.0. The A3D also sports a fingerprint scanner and a face unlock feature. Both were fast and the face unlock worked well at a certain angle when we tried it. All in all, TCL's A3V is a fabulous phablet with good day-to-day -day capabilities. If your budget is 10,000 rupees and you want a large phone, then the A3V is a good choice. But this leaves us with only one question. How does TCL view the Indian market for budget phones? Is it just a gold rush for companies? We want to come here, we want to bring some of the experience of the products we have and we do it in a sustainable way. You know, Of course we know we need to invest, right? But we are not about what we call like fast renting or leasing some market space and then we cannot afford it anymore and then we die. Getting really hot on the Cell Guru show, so let's cool it down a little with a quick little break.